Now, the government in the UK is making a significant new commitment to reduce climate change. It's promising to bring emissions down to almost zero by 2050. It's the first G7 nation to do so. It will involve switching from petrol to electric cars, eating less meat and dairy and taking fewer flights. But how feasible is it? Uh, with me is climate change analyst Tom Burke, who is the chairman of the environmental think tank E3G. Tom, welcome. Uh, first of all, what does net zero actually mean? Net zero means that you have to offset any carbon that you continue to burn by doing things like planting trees, improving the carbon retention in soil, things like that, trying to take carbon out of the atmosphere, though that may be very difficult. But it means you don't have to completely stop burning fossil fuels. And how realistic is this target by 2050 for the UK? I think it's very realistic, actually, not only for the UK. I suspect if we put real effort in, we'll get there much earlier. But I think it's realistic for the world to do that. Really? Yeah. And, I mean, do you think that the will is there, the political will? Well, I think that's a more difficult question. There's no question in my mind that we have already all the technology we need to get there and we've got more to come. Uh, and it's not going to cost us. It may, uh, I guess, Citibank uh, did an analysis a couple of years ago that suggested it would actually be cheaper to go low carbon than high carbon. So I don't think we'll wreck our economies. The real problem is you change the pattern of winners and losers. The winners say thank you very much and stay quiet and the losers make a big fuss about it. And who would be the losers? Well, the losers would be the fossil fuel industries, all those people who've, been, in a sense, invested in the fossil fuel industries, the energy intensive companies, because they'll have to pay maybe a bit more for their energy. They'll be the losers, but also the, the people who provide the supply chains for those people. So quite a lot of people, I don't mean it's not just to think about this in terms of big industries, the people who were going to get left because their jobs have gone and get left behind uh, are different from the people who are going to benefit. And lots of people will benefit. Um, exactly on that. I mean, do you see that business would be able to, to turn those win uh, losers into winners by completely changing the way they operate? I, I think we need to have a much more coherent labour policy to accompany the energy policy we need to deal with climate change. So we've got to do something to uh, retrain the people who will lose their jobs, to create more opportunities for them. And we've also got to do something to make sure that all the skilled people will need in order to uh, be with the low carbon uh, workers of the future, that they're available. So we have a real job to do to add a labour policy to our existing, as it were, climate policy and energy policy. We're talking about policy, we're talking about governments, we're talking about businesses. What about individuals? Well, I think individuals can play a really important role uh, in, in their own lives and how they organise their own lives. Uh, whether that's to travel less, whether that's not to fly more. I think everybody will make their own minds up on those sort of individual contributions. But it's what we do together that's much more important than what we do individually. This is a problem that affects literally every single person on the planet. If we fail to get the right climate policy, then everybody will be uh, affected by that. 2050, I mean, we hear that it should be all done a lot sooner if we're really going to have an impact. I mean, is 2050 soon enough? Well, climate change is a bit like diabetes, you know. It, it, it's a progressive disease, and if the earlier you do something, the better your chances are. So uh, I think if we get past, if we're still burning a lot of fossil fuels beyond 2050, then we're in very serious trouble. Uh, that life, prosperity and security, everybody will be undermined. The earlier we do it, the better our chances in the long run for uh, a, a prosperous world and one that's secure for people. I don't think people have a sense of which how much disruption for climate policy failure will cause. It really will destroy and undermine prosperity and security for everybody. Tom, thank you very much. Uh, Tom Burke from E3G, the environmental think tank. Thanks very much for coming in. Stay with us on BBC World News. I'm on Twitter at Karin BBC.